It's his day. The greatest of all time, Kemba Walker. You're locked on UConn. You are locked on UConn, your daily podcast on the UConn Huskies. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On UConn your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube as part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Little housekeeping, my YouTube support has been absolutely amazing. I'd love to have all my subscribers download the audio version wherever you get your podcasts. It's equally as important for helping the channel and Locked On UConn audience grow. So if you can do me two quick favors, first click that button at the bottom of your screen. Then head over to Apple, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts and hit that follow button. This way you'll never miss a moment of Locked on UConn. Can't tell you how much your support means to me. It's everything. Make sure you drop us a five-star review. Get us some new audience members who are interested in more UConn content. Today's episode is brought to you by GameTime. Download the GameTime app, create an account, and use the code LOCKEDONCOLLEGE for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Well, I moved down to North Carolina from New York City in the spring of 2009. So uh, coming up on that last Kemba Walker season, that's at 2010-2011 national championship season. And so it was, I was obviously still able to follow them, but it wasn't the best season. It wasn't the seasons that we've just had. As you can see, the banners above my head, Um, you know, the the promise of having a a team that's in in the, you know, top five in the country dominating just good feelings all around this was a a team that had a lot of talent but was was a struggle um at least the way i remember it and you'll hear from david borges talk about how even coach calhoun had a you know one lapse at the end of the year where he wasn't really you know enamored with kemba and his play so this kemba walker led team finished ninth in a really ridiculously tough big east conference losing four of the last five games. And then he started their run in the Big East, played the 12 o'clock game against DePaul, um, you know, had, you know, a a, a good game there. I don't remember exactly what he averaged during the tournament, but I do remember they beat a a ranked Georgetown team who was the eighth team in in the conference. I mean, the, the list, NC State just did this this year. But the list of teams outside of DePaul that UConn beat to win the Big East Championship is ridiculous. Let's let's go through it really quick as a remembrance of of Kemba and his retirement day. Um, I don't want this to seem like a memoriam. He's still very much alive, very much, uh, uh, you know, probably looking to move on to the next stage of his his life. But um, the quarterfinal game was against the 22nd ranked Georgetown team. They won by 17 points. Um, then they played the the classic uh, 12 p.m. game on March 10th against Pittsburgh. If everyone remembers the cardiac Kemba step back, win 76-74. Then the next day, they play at seven o'clock against a dreaded rival in Syracuse. It was ranked 11th in the country at that point. Finished fourth in the Big East. Um, then, if that wasn't enough, they had to play Rick Pitino's Louisville team who was 14th in the country, finished third that that uh, that year in the Big East, won by three points. So the Syracuse game might have been the toughest game of all. Uh, they won in overtime. So just a, an incredible, incredible run. The, the degree of difficulty that Kemba and his teammates had to go through in that five games and five nights um, is unquestioned and and should should never be surpassed. Like, congratulations, NC State. Really um, phenomenal run, but you didn't have to run through the gauntlet that that these guys had to go through. But then I take it to something more personal. Um, I made a pact with myself once they got to the NCAA tournament that I was getting a, a dog. Had it all picked out. Um, was picking it up, I believe, three months after the events of the NCAA tournament. Um, and I said, if they win this game, this tournament, they go on a run, I'm naming this dog Hemba. Uh, it was a white lap. Some years later, and if you want to check this out, this is what Kemba looks like today. He's still alive and kicking. 
um, 13 years old. He's a uh, almost 14. Yeah. He's um, he's a good, he's a good kid. And uh, that's our, that's the beautiful Kemba there. Let's go back to. <laughs> so that's him there. Um, and then some years later when they went on another run led by another Yukon legend in Shabazz Napier, I said, I wanted to have, have a little luck. So I had a Kemba Walker shirt. I think it was a shirt. I don't think it was a Jersey. It was like one of those shirts that had his last number 15 and had the last name on it. And I cut the sleeves off and put it on Kemba, the dog for the NCAA, like literally at the beginning of the NCAA tournament as a good luck charm. And they went on to win another national championship. And this is what he looked like with his tongue sticking out. Um, right at the, the first game of the, the first game of the NCAA tournament against St. Joe's. And then the rest was history. So that's my tribute to Kemba uh, through my own silliness of having a dog named after him. I know I'm not the only one. I got some other folks that gave me some stories that I'm going to talk about tomorrow. Um, but before we continue, just give you a rundown of the rest of the program today. You're going to hear from Dave Borges and talk about his recollections and remembrances of Kemba at as his time covering the team. And then bring in our old friend, Sam Calhoun, um, who was just a little guy when Kemba was doing his thing. But I think it kind of puts a little perspective into the kind of kind of person that Kemba was, that his coach's grand, grandson and grandkids were around the team and, you know, treated them like they were his own brothers and sisters. So uh, really appreciate Kemba as a person more more than anything. And I really feel like his his ability to resonate with the fans had a lot to do with the fact that he didn't come into UConn as a finished product. He was a good defensive player, incredibly fast, was a good finisher around the rim for a high school player, but he had to turn himself into a good three-point shooter, uh, a good shooter in general. He was not a good shooter at all, and he worked and worked and worked and worked tirelessly uh, at, at his craft to get to the point where he ended up being an all-NBA player with the Charlotte Hornets in their all-time leading score. The kid's a, I say the kid, but the guy is a absolute fantastic story of perseverance, um, never letting your size get in the way. Now, was he given God-given ability to be fast and just have this type of basketball awareness? Absolutely. But he took coaching. He understood what his role was, and his role at UConn was a star. And if not the greatest, if, if arguably the greatest of all time, my GOAT, Twitter Universe's GOAT, Kemba Walker. We'll have more on him coming up after this. There's nothing like catching an MLB game in the summer. I remember one game where the atmosphere was so electric. It's memories like this that keep me going back. Now, getting tickets is a breeze with game time. An authorized Major League Baseball ticket marketplace. The closer to game time, the better the deals. I found some amazing last-minute tickets on the app, and I love that I can see the view from my seat before buying. Game time makes it super easy with all-in pricing and their lowest price guarantee. Just download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Don't miss out. Make every moment count with Game Time. Download it today. Last-minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Okay, I was, uh, I'm sorry, uh, wanted to bring in Dave Borges of Connecticut Insider. We recorded a segment earlier today, and I'm going to play it now and enjoy. I love Dave's point of view on Kemba Walker, and I'm excited for you guys to hear it. We are here with Dave Borges of Connecticut Insider, has been covering the Huskies for uh, coming up on 18 years. Uh, really wanted to, on this Kemba Walker day, uh, just retired yesterday on Carmelo Anthony's podcast, share some stories or perspective on his legacy at UConn. Dave, you covered Kemba. Um, tell me a little bit, tell me a story you have from him and in, in his time uh, donning the UConn jersey. Well, I, I think... Um... You know, we could go. We could go across all the on-court highlights, the uh, the incredible 
Maui performance his junior year. And then, of course, the Big East tournament, five wins and five nights, um, national championship. We could go through all these on-court things. I, I think there's two things that kind of stand out in, in a little bit, and maybe not it, it, they kind of bracket his entire UConn career. Um, he, when he was uh, – he was just a beloved person even before he became a Husky. When, when he was uh, at the at a November, it was I think it was it must have been November of two thousand eight before he was, excuse me, two thousand seven, after he had committed, he was at a game at Gamble, and um, just as you know, as, on a, on a visit, and uh, all of a sudden the the entire crowd starts chanting Cambo Walker, you know they were just so excited that he had chosen UConn and that uh, they already knew they were going to love him I guess and. That kind of stands out to me, and then to to kind of um, you know uh, uh, put it put a put a punctuation mark on the end of his career. Actually, his passage UConn career. I just remember when um, when he was when he his introductory press conference to the Celtics. Uh, I went up there, and there was another writer, uh, Mike Anthony, who was with the current, but it actually now is with us. Um, we, we we both were there, and you know Kemba was talking to the, the a big crowd of reporters and then I think one of us raised our hands and, and Kemba looked at us and just kind of nodded and said hey guys how you been you know he remembered us uh it's a little self-serving I suppose but it just shows that you know he never got too big time and then I remember the following year when he I went into the Celtics locker room to talk to him and no one else was around him because he was kind of you know they I think they had lost the game and people were just trying to give him the space and I said well what the heck I went up there and he was very gracious he remembered me I don't think he remembered my name or anything like that but Remember the old face and uh, gave me a nice interview. And so, I, you know, those aren't the most exciting stories, but to me, they kind of show what kind of person he is. He was beloved uh, before he even got to UConn, obviously beloved while he was here, and then uh, never got too big for his britches and kind of remembered the the hometown guys, uh, even when he was a multimillionaire millionaire NBA player. No, those are great stories, and it's not self serving. Those are just those are your memories. That's why you're that's why you're here, right? To tell them. Uh, it's your it's your perspective. Um, I have a question around Jersey retirement. Do you think though they're going to do something where they retire number 15? Because he is, I know it's not scientific. I know, you know, you can go a diff couple different ways with your greatest of all time at UConn. But recently, I don't know if you saw it on the whole Twitter verse, but he was named our Twitter goat greatest of all time uh, through a, a myriad of, of, of people that, that voted on that. So I think for the most part, he's always in the top two or three conversation, regardless. Do you think they go that route, or are they going to hold off on that? I'm just curious what your what your thoughts are. I think eventually, there's a pretty good chance he will be. Um, you know, Dave Benedict has he made it clear that you know the, the fact that you're you don't have to be a Hall of Famer um, to, uh, as evidenced by uh, Rip Hamilton getting his number mm -hmm. retired. Um, uh, so that, that, that those those guidelines have kind of fallen by the wayside. Now they're going to be very picky about who whose numbers do get retired. But I think Kemba will be a guy who um, meets those type of criteria: most outstanding player of the Final Four, um, things like that, All American, national champion. Obviously, um, I, I I don't know when. You know, will, will he be the next guy? I'm not sure, but uh, I think it'll happen someday. Okay. Um Kemba as a person, um, you mentioned how nice he was. He kind of gave you a nod. Uh, I remember him. Uh, I, I I was a I'm down here in in Greensboro. I was a Charlotte season ticket holder when he was a a player here. So I have some good memories of him just being really gracious with fans. Is there a, a, anything particular that stood out uh, to you with how he kind of handled interactions with fans, people maybe even even some negative stuff like you know not negative toward him, but fans giving him you know some some bs or anything from the crowd and how he handled his just his persona he always felt like larger than life is that is that your takeaway or what are your thoughts yeah I, I always felt he was very gracious for the fans i mean i can't recall too many instances of you know signing autographs things like that but that certainly happened i think at the championship parade i remember seeing him being very gracious and, and friendly with the fans and um you know i can also again the media you know I remember that that run, the Big East run, the NCAA tournament run. He was being swarmed by media, national media, you know, coming out of the woodwork. And suddenly, you know, instead of just four or five guys talking to him, there's, there's a group of 25 people around him. And he handled that great. He answered every question. He was very courteous. And so even that, again, that's looking at it from the media's point of view. But 
I never saw Kemba, um, you know, really get too upset with with a fan or even with the media. Even though sometimes uh, we can be a little bit, uh, I don't know, pushy to say the least. Pushy. Oh, I was, I was going to use that that phrase too. That's uh, I think that's for everybody though, even my myself included on that. Um, I I have a question around his persona. He's a he's a short he's a shorter guy. He's you know six foot if that. Um, do you think some of that endears him to the larger fan base because he's kind of didn't win the genetic Olympics the way a Donovan Klingon did at seven foot two? Do you think some of that and the skill that he had to have to be a an all time great at UConn and to He's the all-time leading scorer in Charlotte Hornets history. I know it's not a, a, a you know a storied franchise, but this is a kid who's from the Bronx, six foot tall. Um, you know, is not six seven or six eight like LeBron James. So, you think that's part of it? I I, I personally do. Yeah, that. I mean, he didn't even you know he didn't have necessarily like a body that looked that screams NBA, not just mm-hmm. size wise, but you know it wasn't particularly long or anything like that, and, and he wasn't. He came into UConn not not known as a great shooter and wasn't really a great shooter early on in his career and worked so hard at it that he became someone who could score, you know would score ninety points in three games in Maui and, and dominate uh, in the in the uh, Big East tournament and put up these big scoring numbers and become a really good shooter and like you said all time leading scorer in Charlotte um, became a very good scorer in the NBA um, so I think people just appreciated that. Not only was he not born with these physical gifts, but he really had to work hard on improving his shooting um, and improving and just being able to uh, to beat guys uh, at his size. It, it took a lot of hard work and determination. People people uh, respected that. Yeah, I I, I couldn't uh, agree more. Um, talk to me about how how the gauntlet that he had to run in the team uh, in the 2010-11 season just to get to the Final Four. Forget about beating Kentucky and Butler. They had to go out west at in Anaheim, beat a San Diego State that had a Kawhi Leonard, and then beat an Arizona team that had Derek Williams, who was the number two pick in the draft. Um, not a tall task. This wasn't a, uh, a the the you know the the run that UConn just made where they you know had to take a bus to you know to Boston to you know to to get to the Final Four. So to me, that's one of the most impressive achievements that he had and that team had going forward. Yeah, when you consider they had just got off that historic Big East run, and everybody said, well, they're, great, that's never been done before, incredible, historic, but they're going to be flamed out. They're going to be tired, and uh, they're going to be worn out now and probably fizzle somewhere in the NCAAs. And they did it, and they beat, like you said, Kawhi Leonard, uh, Derek um, – Th- Derek Th- no, Derek Thomas? Derek Williams. Derek Williams, yeah, who I loved as a yep. player, and I thought he was going to be a big NBA player. And his, his – uh, I think he had the, the – buzzer beating shot that went up in the air and could have won the game that in that game. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Those could were have ended all, game. Could have ended it all right there. So um yeah, that was just unbelievable the way they were able to Kemba led that charge and they were able to after the the grueling Big East tournament keep going and end up winning 11 straight. It's funny because during that season like even not you know they had, had they kind of closed out the season not playing very well. And I even remember one game, one of the last three or four games, Kemba didn't play well. Some, somebody asked Jim Calhoun a question and Jim said, uh, I don't, I'm not, I don't feel like talking about Kemba right now. And it was <laughs> almost the first time and probably the last time I ever saw Jim kind of uh, publicly sort of criticize Kemba. Uh, and, but they just turned it on at the right time and proved what, what winners they were and what a winner Kemba is and was. No, it's a, it's a great way to end the segment there. They lost four of five to end the year that year. Uh, including their last two regular season games and kind of put them in that dreaded 12 p.m. slot uh, yep. where they had to beat DePaul to to start that run. But yeah, I think I think UConn fans of today, uh, or at least the younger fans, don't don't know what a, like a, a grueling run, not only just the tournament, but those and that NCAA tournament that season, there were not a lot of uh, you know blowout games. Just the first game against Bucknell, and after that, it was you know a tough one against Cincinnati, San Diego State, Arizona was a buzzer beater, Kentucky they won by one point, and that Butler game was a just a, a rock fight. So Kemba led that whole charge, and and I I appreciate you, Dave, coming coming on, and we got your name right this time, so you can so people can find <laughs> you on on X uh, at Dave Borges uh, from Connecticut Insider sharing his. Kemba Walker Day stories. Really appreciate you coming on, and um, we'll catch you another time, hopefully as the season approaches. All right, Mark. No problem. Good talking to you. Thanks, Dave. That was Dave Borges from Connecticut Insider reminding us of 
incredible season, incredible times of Kemba, even before he was a UConn Husky on his, I bet, I bet it was like an official visit where the crowd started chanting his name. So pat yourself, pat yourself on the back if you were there and, and making that, uh, making that chant. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Have to turn on the volume with all that shouting. Make the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest sports stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis news, opinions, and more streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. We will be right back with Sam Calhoun and his thoughts on Kemba Walker. We're here with Sam Calhoun. Sam, uh, as you know, and you know, we're we're spending the the next two days, a forty eight hour tribute to the great Kemba Walker. Um, he retired on uh, Carmelo Anthony's podcast uh, yesterday. And mm-hmm. when the news broke, I was actually uh, with my kids at the, at the Greensboro Science Center. So I legitimately got a bunch of text messages like, hey, did you see the news? You know, because everyone knows from everyone, at least locally here for me and uh, back home, know that Kemba Walker was my favorite player of all time. When um, they when they went on that run, I was in the process of of getting a, a dog and i was just like if they win this title i'm naming this dog kemba like i don't i don't th- i think even <laughs> if they lost i would have named him anyway but it was kind of like one of those things where it just all felt really good and all put together so wanted to bring in some some folks some familiar names some some yukon folks to talk about their favorite player as well so sam give me your favorite kemba story uh, I know you said he's your favorite player as well, so want to want to hear from you and and talk through some Kemba Walker stuff. Yeah, no, I uh, he I do know he had this decision made for a couple of days actually. Um, yeah. Uh, so, um, uh, but I found out yesterday, uh, like everyone else, uh, I was actually coming out of uh, the golf course, uh, put, playing nine holes with one of my buddies, and I opened my phone and. I just see texts like DC come up, retired, and I was like, he did. I knew he. I know he wants to get into coaching, which is awesome. Interesting. Um, I, I did read about that somewhere. Uh, I think it, may, it actually may have been one of your guests that's coming on, uh, Dave Borges. That maybe it's one of the UConn beat writers. I know that. Maybe okay. Don Mori. Who knows? Uh, but uh, I did see it somewhere. My my favorite chemist story. The thing is the. I don't really have like a story in. Uh, I don't really have a story in mind because I mean, obviously, I was like seven years old when we won the okay. 2011 national title. But he, I could tell you a lot about him just like growing up because I've known I, I've known this I've known him since 2008 when he was a freshman uh, mm-hmm. on that 2008 2009 team, and I I. Uh, obviously, that he wasn't my favorite player back then because uh, because he wasn't a massive contributor. That that would have been guys like AJ Price, Stanley Robinson, Jerome Dyson, sure. who seemed to be that that was a loaded team. Should have won the national championship. It sucks that Jerome got injured, but um, the the uh, the. The, the memories I have from that 2010-2011 season, I mean, he was – when when I say he, there was no one more friendlier to, like, us grandchildren, there there really wasn't. And he – and there's, there's a photo, and I think I posted it on Twitter. It's, it's after the national championship, and he's just, like, surrounded by us six grandchildren, and it, it – if I had to describe one photo to describe what he is, if I had to take one photo to describe him as a person, it's that one because he's such a friendly guy, and he he he's a friendly guy off court, but he's a killer on the court. That's how I really see him. I one one of the things I regret in my life is not being there for Maui, not being there for the Big East tournament. I I I was living on the West Coast. I was living actually in the San Francisco Bay Area at the time so i i wasn't in school was actually very school is important to uh, us uh well my immediate family so we weren't able to make those trips but 
watching those, watching the Kemba step back in the pit game, I still think, by the way, his best game was the next night against Syracuse. He uh, he dropped at least 30 points. I think it was like 12 rebounds, five assists, six steals. Six freaking steals is a lot. <laughs> um, right. That That's easily my – and we beat – our, our tribal in overtime and kept the five games, five days going. What he did in those five days at Madison Square Gardens is something that I think is just remarkable. It And we have six national titles. Aside from that, that may be my, that may be my favorite moment of all time. Just in that, and I, I didn't get to see like the dream season or any of that, mm-hmm. but in my lifetime, that five games in five days, and I think my grandfather will even say this if, if you were to ask him, the five games in five days is probably one of, the, one of his mo- most proudest accomplishments because of how difficult it is. And we just had a team in the ACC do that. So, yeah, NC State, yep. Uh, NC State, and they, they also made a run to the Final Four. So, um, maybe, maybe there's a pattern there. Uh, right. Yeah, it's crazy. But Kemba just, I remember being the nicest guy. And the fact, and and it's not even just him. And I and I really get to see how kind he is from his mom. And, I, and I've known his mom for about as long as I've known Kemba. She loved us grandchildren. And I remember, I was looking back at old DMs actually this morning on Twitter. Uh, I remember a Dave Borges tweet that said like uh, Andrew was really excited to get back to the uh, new Northeast region and then sure. to see my grandparents and then also us grandchildren. So the fact that she remembers that and she was so excited. She's still, by the way, I don't know if you know this, but she's still best friends with uh, Shabazz's mom, uh, Carmen. Yeah. Yep. Uh, they'll go, they go to games together. They are, they are two of my favorite people in the world. They're awesome. But the fact that they that Andrea remembers us is awesome. And then of course Kem- Kemba still still will recognize us like now. I rem- I remember seeing him in Houston. Actually th- th- this is actually a story. So Andy Cash was coming up at the 2023 final four. Okay. Uh, 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 to, to he was with Westwood One Radio talking, and he was interviewing Kemba, and in Kemba, and Andy was like, uh, "So there seems to be a lot of uh, a lot of people around uh, around wearing your jersey. How, what do you what do you think of your legacy that you put there?" And he and he and Andy points out my jersey. I'm like a couple rows in front at the Final Four, and and Kemba goes. Uh, hey, no, actually, that's Jim Calhoun's grandson. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, no, no that's uh, great. And then, and then, and then, like, I didn't hear it, but I just did. I turned turned around, and they're all like looking at me and laughing. I'm like, "What's going on?" And I was told that, and I was like, "Oh, that's hilarious." So, so yeah, the, the I mean, Kemba will go up to all of us and just be. Just he's he's the same person now that he was when he was I don't know how twenty twenty one in his junior year uh, uh, college mm-hmm. so that that was something that really was just that that that's I love what he does on the court and I love loved what he did in Charlotte in Boston absolutely uh, especially uh, and of course. I'm not a Knicks fan, but uh, he, it's okay. he. I remember. I remember what he did against the Knicks. I was just actually seeing a clip of him getting a triple double on Christmas Day uh, with the Knicks, and then he also had time with Dallas, and then of course he went overseas to Monaco. Wherever he goes, he makes a great impact, and I think that's what you can take away on the court, but off the court, where I really get to see him and. I was I was I was there for San Diego State for the Arizona yeah. games in Anaheim. I remember scouting with Coach Glenn Miller in the. Uh, <laughs> I was watching film with him in the ballroom of our, of our team hotel in Anaheim, uh, and I, I I I'll have to show you when I'm back 
back in back on the mainland. I'm on Nantucket right now, but I, I think I still have some of the notes that I took from from that. The, I mean, I was seven years old, so there's probably not a lot of information. It's okay, <laughs> but uh, but th- those things really do mean a lot, and I think just the amount of work he's put in, and not only just to be the best player he can be, but the best person he could be. And I, uh, and I don't, th- and you have to respect that. I'm still uh, 13 years later. I'm still upset. They didn't win national player of the year or biggest player of the year. Ben Hansborough, yeah. of course, or biggest player of the year. He's a great player, but I thought Kemba had the better season. Just looking, you can just look at what he did against the top six teams he he was incredible despite the fact that we finished ninth in the Big East. And then of course Jimmer Fredette. I mean Jimmer Fredette was insane, but that that does age poorly year after year because of the greatness Kemba has put on. I mean both both players are college basketball legends. So so I so yeah that that's that's kind of what I think about when I think of uh, Kemba Walker. Absolutely. Sam, I really appreciate you coming on and sharing some some Kemba stories. Uh, yeah, I'd love to take you up on. I'd love to see some notes from your <laughs> film sessions because I have a seven year old and I, I'd be interested in, in in seeing what your what your uh, at least what your handwriting looked like at that age. I know I know <laughs> my son's good, is, is pretty Mark. rough. It's not good. <laughs> I, I I can imagine. I, I can picture it now. It's not good, but the memory is fuzzy of what what was on the notes. I think maybe taking like two, one or two notes. I mean, the, look, I to the fact that I could say that I scouted, like I watched film and took notes and scouted Kawhi Leonard and Derek Williams right. is pretty. I mean, that's a bragging. That's a bragging right for me. So uh, by itself, the fact that the fact that I have well, every time that I see Kemba, I, don't, I mean, obviously the busy guy. He's in Charlotte right now, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, which shouldn't be, I mean, you, you're in Greensboro right now, so that's not yeah. too far from uh, where you are. But need to get up, Kemba. We need to get uh, up. Yeah. We need to get out. Come on the show. Yeah, no. Uh, th- this guy, oh, <laughs> this guy's great. I this forgot guy. his flips. Um, but, but yeah, no, I, I have nothing bad to say about Kemba. This, he, he was humble. He, uh, he, I truly believe that I'm going to, attend his college basketball hall of fame ceremony whenever the induction whatever that will be he will i think he will be in just i mean look 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 at the look at his junior year season alone but he i mean he he yeah. was just a kid i i know him as a kid that went was from the bronx new york went to rice high school then even though you're the superstar he'll still he still had time he he would spend time with us off the camera like this wasn't a, a guy that would just be around us grandchildren on just for the, like the on camera nice guy type of cliche. He was he was a guy that was very much like present to all of us Calhouns off the court as well. And he he he's so he's so nice. He, he if you ever get the chance to meet him you you'd understand what i'm talking about <laughs> yeah no um before before i let you go yeah I, uh i was a hornet season ticket holder so i met him on quite a few occasions uh you know spent spent some not a lot of time but they had these events and uh even when jeremy lamb was on the hornets team so oh yeah definitely gravitated towards the the yukon guys uh when when they were on the hornet so all-time leading uh, scorer in Hornets history as well. Yep. Uh, a UConn legend, Sam. I really appreciate you coming on and sharing some stories. And we will catch you another time. And maybe maybe it's during his induction ceremony or 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 whenever we <laughs> want to pick pick your brain about about the UConn Huskies. Thanks, Sam. Yeah, I, I will. That was Sam Calhoun. Um, really appreciate Sam's perspective. Uh, definitely was around during a great time when his grandfather was the head coach at the University of Connecticut. Wanted to say this has been another episode of Locked on UConn. I don't have any other words just to say that Kemba uh, Walker, you are the goat of goats at UConn. You are larger than life. You brought a title to, to to the mix. But even if you hadn't, your spirit, 
your perseverance, your hardworking mentality is everything that a Husky is and should be. And I really appreciate all that you've done for the University of Connecticut and for Husky fans all over the place. So um, I'm your host, Mark Zanetto, asking you to stay locked in, stay connected, make sure your toughness meter is always rising. And as always, go Huskies.